So there's some things that the discriminant can tell you about your solutions to quadratic equations. So real quick, let's review. The discriminant is, you should already know this, but it's b squared minus 4ac. And remember we were using that when we were factoring quadratic equations or quadratic expressions before. And we could tell if a quadratic expression was factored if it's a perfect square. So how do we determine if it's a perfect square? So if it's a perfect square, then you can factor it. All right? So now let's think about all of the different types of numbers that the discriminant could result in. Okay, and now we're also going to look and see at where is the discriminant in the quadratic formula. Well, the discriminant is what's, it's our radicand. It's the thing under the radical. So there's all these different numbers that we could throw in there. We could calculate the discriminant and we usually get a positive number. Sometimes we get a perfect square. Sometimes we don't get a perfect square. Sometimes we get zero. Zero means something as well. And then sometimes we get a negative number. So, so now we're going to look at all of the different types of discriminants that we can get and what it means for us when we solve a quadratic equation. So there are four possibilities. One possibility is that we could calculate the discriminant and we could get zero. Okay? We could calculate the discriminant and we could get a negative number. We could calculate the discriminant and get a positive number. Now there are two types of positive numbers that I could get here. I could get one that is a perfect square. I could get one that's non-perfect square. So those are all the different possibilities that will basically hit all the different types of numbers that we could get. So let's just look at the discriminant of zero. First of all, you get the discriminant of zero. Is that factorable? Well, we ask ourselves, is zero a perfect square? Can we find the square root of zero? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, we can. So this one is factorable, okay? So now let's think, well, how many solutions are there gonna be? So let's just imagine the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the discriminant. Well, we've done all of our work, let's say, and we got that the discriminant is actually zero. So let's think about this. The square root of zero is actually zero, right? So what I end up having here is negative b plus or minus zero over whatever 2a is. So now if you think about it, what is negative b plus zero? Well, that's going to give me negative b over 2a, right? What's negative b minus zero? Well, same thing, negative b over 2a. So what I end up getting when my discriminant is zero is I end up having one solution. So that's the answer here. How many solutions are there? There is only one solution. All right, so now let's think about it. The solutions are what type of numbers? So we've got three different types of numbers. We have rational numbers. We have irrational numbers, and then we have imaginary numbers. And our imaginary numbers are what we get when we're trying to find the square root of a negative number, which is no solution, right? You're going to learn more about that in Algebra 2, imaginary numbers, but that's what imaginary numbers are. They're not real numbers. So let's think about this. If I were to add 0 to something, divide it by 2a, I get negative b over 2a. Is that going to be rational, irrational, or imaginary? That's going to give me a rational number, right? It's going to be a fraction, or it's going to give me a whole number. It's going to give me a decimal that stops one of those numbers. So this one is rational. It's the type of answer you're going to get. You're going to get a rational, exact answer. And then let's think about the graph. If I were to graph something that has a discriminant of 0, it has one solution. How many x-intercepts will there be? Well, remember, x-intercepts are your solutions. So number of x-intercepts? one. And then if I'm graphing something that has just one solution, remember these things make parabolas. So if I were to graph something that has just one solution, I'm going to have a parabola that hits the x-axis in one place. So it's going to look something like this, where it hits the x-axis in just one place, right there. Or it could open down where it hits the x-axis. The vertex of the parabola is the x-axis. 
So now that you've gotten one example, take a moment to really think to yourself about what's going to happen if your discriminant is negative. What's going to happen if our discriminant is positive and it's a perfect square and positive if it's a non-perfect square? So I encourage you to stop the video and see if you can fill out the chart on your own and then tune back in and see if you've got it. All right, so let's talk about it. Negative number. Discriminant negative number, is it going to be factorable? No, absolutely not, because negative numbers are not perfect squares. Even if it's like negative 36, negative 49, not a perfect square because it's negative. So let's just pick a negative number. Let's just imagine I've got a negative number inside there. Let's say I got a discriminant, it's negative 5. How many solutions are there going to be? Well, we've done that. When your discriminant is negative, there's no solution because you can't find the square root of a negative number. So here, there are none. What type of solution am I going to have? Well, it's no solution. It's not a real number. It's going to be imaginary. So it's an imaginary number. Okay? How many x-intercepts will there be? None. It has no solution. So there will be zero x-intercepts, which means when you go to graph it, you're going to have a parabola that either opens up or down, and it does not hit the x-axis at all. Right, so there's two examples. Parabolas that don't hit the x-axis have no solution. All right, so now most of the time, we get a positive discriminant. Sometimes we get a perfect square, sometimes we don't. If we get a perfect square, is it factorable? Yes, it's factorable. So let's just imagine this. I'm going to pick a perfect square. Suppose I have a perfect square of 49. Let's go ahead and put positive 49 in there. And now let's just think about this for a minute. If I'm going to take negative b plus the square root of 49 and then negative b minus the square root of 49 and then divide it by 2a, well, the square root of 49 is 7, right? Well, that's a number, right? So if I take a number, I add 7, and then I take, another, and I take that same number and I subtract 7, how many solutions am I going to get? I'm going to get two different numbers, right? So here, you're going to have two solutions. What type of the solutions will, will it be? Well, because the radical is going to give us a rational number, that means our whole answer is going to be rational. So we're going to have a number that's rational. How many x-intercepts will I have? x-intercepts are your solutions, so there are going to be two. So if I were to graph a parabola that had two solutions, remember, the parabola is going to have to hit the x-axis twice. So there's one solution like that. You could do another one that opens down but it's still going to have to hit the x-axis twice. All right, what if my discriminant is not a perfect square, like the number 20 or 31 or something like that? Is it factorable? No, because to be factorable, it has to be a perfect square. So let's pick a number. Let's say I have 40. 40 is not a perfect square. If I were to try to find the square root of it, you'd end up getting a big, long decimal, but you're still, there's still a number being added to the square root of 40 and then subtracted square root of 40. So you're end up going to have you're end up going to you're ending up with again two solutions. So what type of solutions do you have? In this case, you're going to have an irrational solution because the square root of a non-perfect square is an irrational number. It's a decimal that goes on forever without repeating. How many x-intercepts? 2. You're going to have two x-intercepts. The only thing is is that you're going to have two irrational x-intercepts. So your x-intercepts are going to be numbers going forever without repeating. So if ever you're struggling with this at all, you just have to remember, think about the square roots of these numbers and think about what that means. Let's flip it to the back. So the first one I've gone ahead and done with you. We're going to look at these quadratic equations, and the first thing that we're going to do is find the discriminant. So if you looked, remember to find the discriminant, you have to make sure the whole equation is equal to 0, which this one is. In this case, a is 1, b is 0, c is negative 9. And so I took these numbers, and I plugged it into the discriminant. And when I go through and I plug into the discriminant, I get that my discriminant value is 36. And so then I'm going to ask myself, okay, if my discriminant value is 36, how many solutions do I have and why? Well, I'm going to have two solutions. The reason I'm going to have two solutions is because the discriminant is positive. 
right? If your discriminant is positive, you're going to be adding a number and then subtracting a number. That's going to give you two different answers because of the plus or minus. What kind? It's rational. The reason it's rational is because the discriminant is a perfect square. The square root of 36 is 6, so you're not going to get a decimal here. Let's go ahead now and we're going to skip down to E, all right? First thing, to find the discriminant, I have to make sure everything's equal to 0. So to get everything equal to 0, I'm going to add 5x to both sides and then I'm going to subtract 2, which then is going to leave me with 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. So in this case, A is 3, B is 5, C is negative 2. So I'm going to plug it into B squared minus 4AC. And I like to do B squared in my head because that's always going to end up being positive. So negative, or, a negative is a positive number, positive is a positive number when you square it. So 5 squared is 25. So B squared is 5. And since 5 squared is 25, I'm just going to write 25. Minus 4 times A. A is 3 times negative 2. That's C. So then remember to multiply first. So I'm going to do 4 times 3 times negative 2, which is going to give me negative 24. But negative 24 is being subtracted, so minus a negative really is positive. So what I get is 25 plus 24. And then you add that, you get that it's 49. So the discriminant is 49. Since the discriminant is 49, how many solutions am I going to have? Well, I'm going to have two. The reason I'm going to have two is because it is a positive number. That's my reason. What kind? It's going to be rational. Why is it going to be rational? Because the square root of 49 is a rational number. So in the square root of 49 is a perfect square. Okay? So take a moment now to finish the rest of these problems and then we will check them in class. If you forget which one is which, use the front to help you and then really try to think about why. Why is that the case? Good luck.